I started training because, like a lot of climbers, I was plateaued and um, I was looking for ways to improve. I found that bouldering just wasn't enough and so I started doing a bit of research and I found that um, this uh, idea of periodization where you would focus on different phases and then putting them all together I would have a peak phase it's where I would plan a road trip or a big project or maybe a competition. The first phase is a hypertrophy phase and that's aimed at building muscle mass in my forearms and in my back. And that's done through hangboarding, heavy finger rolls, and weighted pull-ups. The second phase is a uh, maximum recruitment phase and that's aimed at awakening dormant muscle fibers in, in your muscles. And um, the idea is to recruit more muscle fibers to become fast twitch muscle fibers. And this is done through campusing. So the third phase is a power endurance phase, and that's really aimed at extending how many medium to difficult moves I can take in a row. And the idea is to simulate racing between cruxes or um, long power endurance sprints. So some of the exercises I would do in the power endurance phase would be linking boulder problems together, doing four by fours, and uh, doing intervals. I generally start off with um, 10 pounds and I add 3 to 5 pounds every few sessions. A typical set consists of 6 to 7 7 second hangs with a 3 second rest in between each hang. It usually totals about 1 minute. And the idea is to simulate going through a maximum red point crux. Is the chart just for mainly keeping you on track for the specific workout? Yeah, so I'll like I'll grab, I'll put everything into an Excel sheet, and then uh, so based on the reps and then the difficulty and the number and the weight, I can kind of graph it out and show like progression over time, and it's kind of like my metric for how hard a whole workout is, and then I can like layer graphs over each other and then see like my progression over time. So it's definitely like so if I even if I don't send anything I'll know that I got stronger just because of the training itself so, so I think kind of like red pointing roots is rad but you know of course it's what I want to do but it's not a very good metric of improvement um, you know it's you could have sent because you use your body in some new novel way or you know personal best you know, could have been just because it suited you really well but it's not necessarily you know, a good indicator Use a stopwatch. They're cheap and easy and keeping track of seconds is really important. Use a partner. Um, they'll be, make all the difference on those days when motivation is lacking. And they'll keep you going that extra, extra several seconds. Make sure your hangboard's an appropriate height. You want to be able to comfortably reach the handholds from the ground. Make sure your hangboard's clean. Whether that means bribing the gym staff to take the hangboard down to clean it, make sure they do it. A greasy hangboard can is, <laughs> I don't even know, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Hang weight from a harness rather than using a weight vest. I find that when I have a weight vest on, I'm forced to arch my back to keep the weight underneath the hangboard. I find that it's important to track my progress to measure my improvements. Say I might, I might not make it out to the crag during my peak phase, but I know based on my training that I actually did get stronger. Plan for high and low intensity days. To avoid the onslaught of tendonitis, make sure you hangboard with your elbows slightly bent. Save the straight arm business when you really need it. And as always, make sure you're properly warmed up. <laughs>